Hey guys, this is Torn, and today we're going to be talking about some leaks. The leaks have kind of slowed down a lot, unfortunately, but there is still some pretty decent ones out there. Um, before we get into it, I want to ask you guys, if you can, feel free to subscribe. You know, we've got a whole bunch of people watching, but not as many subscribers. I would love to hit 3,000 subscribers. That's our kind of next goal. We hit 2,000, and thank you so much for everyone for doing that. We kind of smashed past it, which is really, really awesome. So, our first one here seems to be from the bonus sheet for Bloomborough, which is really, really exciting. Um, Bloomborough leaks already kind of coming out, which is pretty awesome. Now, looking at the, the symbol here and looking down here, it looks like it's BLC, which is the like uh, commander thing, like the commander, um, the commander sheet. But it, it's likely, you know... I don't know. It could be like a bonus sheet. Assumedly, it is the bonus sheet from there. Now, this one here comes to us because they showed these little pins that are like AR uh, and you can like, you know, hook up with AR with them and scan them and stuff. And then they showed this card that popped up there. Now, this was accidental. Obviously, they didn't mean to show it because then they removed the video. However, it looks like we're going to get furry versions of a lot of the planeswalkers. Um, like a uh, for you know with bloom burrows so uh this is jace the mind sculptor obviously a reprint but re kind of branded uh this is probably like a full art version of it and then there'll be like a normal version because we have seen an art for jace prior to this um and this one here just seems to be like a uh you know an anime art style i don't know um Bloomborough looks like it's going to have some amazing stuff. I am so excited for Bloomborough. Um, but, you know, Modern Horizons before that, Assassin's Creed before that. Uh, so this is, you know, moving on to Modern Horizons 3. This one here was Wheel of Potential. So it's obviously, you know, meant to be like a wheel. Uh, you get three energy and then you can pay X amount of energy. So each player may exile their hand and then they draw X cards. If X is seven or more, you can play the cards that you exiled this way until the end of turn. So primarily you're wanting to kind of, you know, exile your own stuff and then use it to draw stuff. Uh, and then, you know, have the mana to be able to cast things beyond that. Uh, it does say each player may, so other people may exile their hand, um, but they don't have to, so they can just choose not to. However, you know, I don't know. It's kind of, you know, a very interesting card. Um, some people are going to be using it to exile their own hand. Some people are going to be using it to, you know, potentially uh, help someone else with it. You could do some really awesome stuff to be able to kind of play from exile here, especially if you've got some of the cards that allow you to be able to cheat stuff out from exile or, you know, something like um, the new doc r lock that allows things that are in exile to cost less um to like you know cards that you play from exile cost less that would be insane with this because it just makes things cost a whole bunch less um as well as allowing you to get some card draw so if you've got a really shitty hand you can potentially use it to kind of you know draw cards or if you've got down to your last card because you've been playing everything you can exile your stuff draw a whole bunch of stuff We've got one of the dual face cards. So this is Bogart Trawler. Uh, so on the one side, it's got on when Bogart, Bogart Trawler comes in, then you can exile target player's graveyard. You know, um, what's that? Like a, a, a bog, essentially. Um, and then on the other side, you've got, you know, just a land here that enters untapped if you pay three life. So I think they're called bolt lands. People have been calling them bolt lands. Uh, so very nice. Um, you know, I love dual face cards. I love dual face lands. There's lots of really great ways you can use these. Uh, this is an uncommon one as well. So you'll be able to see more of them, you know, not too rare. We've got waterlogged teachings here. So I think there's going to be one for essentially every color and then every dual color. Uh, so waterlogged teachings, you get to tutor for an instant or a card with flash, reveal it, put it into your hand and then shuffle. It also does have instant as well. Um, you know, going to cost you four. And then on the other side here, it enters tapped, but it can create, you know, dimmer. Um, really interesting. Uh, I don't know if it's powerful just by itself, but having the option of being able to play either, you know, it as a tutor or it as a tapped land. If you, you know, draw it early on, and you don't need the tutor or, you know, being able to bypass that is good. Unfortunately, it does come in tapped. You know, you don't have the option of bolting yourself to be able to allow you to do it, but you know, you can't all be winners. We've got sunk in stupor here and then Soporic, Sop 
Soporific, Soporific, I think that's it, Springs. Uh, so on the left-hand side, it's uh, essentially kind of like a counter spell, return target spell or non-land permanent and opponent controls to its owner's hand. So, you know, you can counter something, it doesn't count it really, it just returns it to their hand. But also, um, you know, you have the option of there of removing something that's on the field as well, removing that to the hand too, uh, to be able to bounce something back. Uh, only opponents though, unfortunately, you can't, you know, bounce your own stuff with it. And then on this side, it's got the bolt land for blue there. Now this one here is, you know, there's a lot of kind of talk about whether it's fake or not. So this one could potentially be fake. Uh, I'm kind of on the fence here. Now the artist seems to be Scott Murphy, who also did this other card that is also in the set. Um, you know, I couldn't exactly find this art, but then there's been a lot of, you know, talk about the fact that it could be AI generated, having a look at like the sleeves here and the fingers look a little bit off, which, you know, definitely could be an AI generation or just, you know, the artist used AI for whatever reason. Um, I think if the, this card is real and it comes out, then people are going to question it. There's a number of different reasons why, you know, it's, could be fake. Uh, for a start, they literally just banned all that glitters in Pauper. And this seems to be, you know, very similar. It gets plus one, plus one for each energy counter you have. So there's a few different reasons that why it could be fake. You know, the fact that that just got banned, but you know, they did, uh, Gavin did mention there was a card coming out that could potentially see a ban uh, from, you know, for Pauper as if it comes out and, you know, it's a bit too strong, very quickly banned. Uh, but it's a energy card that doesn't generate energy. It's got Umbra Armor on it. Now, Umbra Armor alone is not saying that it is, you know, fake. Uh, Umbra Armor is what they renamed Totem Armor to. Totem Armor got scrapped Umbra Armor instead. Uh, something about, you know, cultural sensitivities and stuff like that. Whether you agree with it or not, that's not what we're debating here. Um, but, you know, the fact that it is not an... An Umbra, um, you know, usually I think that nearly every single, yeah, sorry, every single aura that is an Umbra is labeled, uh, sorry, and like a totem armor, Umbra armor is labeled as an Umbra up here and is themed around an animal. But there is one exception, which is one of the planeswalkers generates mask tokens um, and then they have totem armor built into them, which is the only exception to that. So, you know, it could be real. It could not be. That's not up for me to decide. Uh, I just wanted to kind of share it with you guys in case you have some ideas. We also got Flare of Fortitude here, which is you may sacrifice a non-token white creature rather than pay this spell's mana cost. And then until end of your turn, your life total can't change and permanent you control gain hexproof and indestructible. Now for um, Commander, this is going to be a pretty bonkers card. Um, you know, you could sacrifice, you know, white and black, uh, is all about aristocrats and stuff. Uh, you've got so much kind of, you know, in that all's off colors around aristocrats and sacrificing your own stuff anyway. Uh, and you know, sacrificing non-token stuff. So you, this is going to be really strong in that, in my opinion, it's essentially, you know, allows you to keep your stuff alive, um, but also stops your life total from being able to be changed. Now I'm not going to claim that I play much modern, um, but from what I've heard, uh, people have said that this isn't going to be too bad in modern. You know, there's a bit of a debate, actually. Some people say it's going to be trash and that it's, you know, a commander-aimed card. Some people are saying that it's not going to be too bad. What do you guys think? If you play modern, let me know. Uh, and then our final one here is Aladamri Corvec Corvectal. I am butchering that and I apologize. So, um... Obviously, you know, this is the first kind of reprint, well, not reprint, new card that Aladamri's had in ages, I think. I don't think there's been one for quite a while. Um, now, this is a very, very interesting card. You may look at the top card of your library at any time and you can cast creatures from the top of your library. That, in my opinion, is the strong part about this, being able to cast creatures from the top of your library. Now, the second part here isn't quite as strong, but it's still gonna be a useful card. You pay green, tap, and then you can tap to untap creatures you control, reveal a card from your hand or the top of your library to put a creature, if it's a creature card that you reveal, put it onto the, uh, onto the battlefield. Now. Uh, you can only activate it once per turn, but that is a decently strong part of it and very interesting. Like, you know, as a strong kind of commander, I think that that's pretty good. Uh, it doesn't have to be 
like a uh, uh, non-token creatures you tap either. So something like my my Voja deck, this would be bonkers in my Voja deck. This is going to go straight into my Vonkers deck, uh, into my Voja deck. Now, a um, couple of interesting things. As I said, very strong. I think it'd be a decent commander. Um, but, 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 with the like storyline and everything like that, Aladamri's had a lot of kind of tie-ins with Yorg, Yorgmoth, Yorgmoth. Um, and there's been a lot of people talking about the fact that there could potentially be a Yogmoth card. Yogmoth, yeah, uh, card coming in this set, right? His actual like god card, him at the the height of his power kind of thing. That would be very interesting. Now we have seen a, a slight glimpse. There was a portrait version of um, of Kirik. Um, side of Yogmoth, uh, shown where, you know, the new fancy port, well, the, the, like, the Commander, uh, Commander Masters had them in the same, the, like, portrait, uh, art styles. There was one of him over an art card of, uh, Kirik. So, maybe we'll get a Kirik reprint plus a new Yogmoth card, um, to, you know, be like that side kind of stuff going on as well. I don't know. I'm very interested. Um, now, I'm not a huge fan of Modern Horizons, mostly because I like uh, expansions that kind of tell a story rather than, you know, a whole bunch of related-ish kind of cards. Uh, but I'll be very interested to see what exactly happens and stuff like that. It was also, this is also very interesting because Eladamri was revealed to be the Korvac doll, which is meant to combine the three tribes, I believe it is. So finally seeing a card for this is really, really cool. Uh, so let me know down in the comments what you guys think. I hope you guys had a wonderful day and goodbye.